Good morning, everybody. It's Mrs. Lorenz and Miss Lucy. Lucy, say hi to the kids, can you? Oh, yeah, give me smooch. Okay, now you guys sit down nice and listen to our story for today. We got this book from Mercer, Tammy, and Hank. It's called Chicken Sunday, and this book is by Patricia Polacco. See, Louis? This little girl right here is probably Patricia when she was a little girl. Um, she wrote a lot of her books about herself, which in turn means that they're an autobiography. Um, she talks also a lot about her babushka in a lot of her books because that's her grandmother. She just loved her to bits. And um, my favorite Patricia Polacco book is Thunder Cake. But I think I'm going to like this one too. Chicken Sunday. Now, moms and dads, this is a kind of long book, so I don't know if you still want to do it for bedtime. She dedicated the book to Stuart Grinnell Washington with love. Now, in the pictures, kids, you make sure you look for Patricia in those pictures if you can see it. Stuart and Winston were my neighbors. They were my brothers by a solemn ceremony we had performed in their backyard one summer. They weren't the same religion as I was. They were Baptists. Their grandma, Eula Mae Walker, was my grandma now. My babushka had died two summers before. Sometimes my mother let me go to church on Sunday with them. How we loved to hear Miss Eula sing. She had a voice like slow thunder and sweet rain. We'd walk to church and back. She'd take my hand as we crossed College Avenue. Even though we'd been churching up like decent folks ought to, she'd say, I don't want you to step in front of those two fast cars. You'll be as flat as a hen's tongue. She squeezed my hand. When we walked past Mr. Kadinsky's hat shop, Miss Eula would always stop and look in the window at the wonderful hats. Then she'd sigh <sighs> and walk on. You see? And Patricia, right there. Now Lucy's misbehaving in this chair. Miss Luli? Luli. Lucy, you behave. We called those Sundays Chicken Sundays because Miss Eula almost always fried chicken for dinner. There'd be collard greens with bacon, a big pot of hop and john, corn on the cob, and fried spoon bread. One Sunday at the table, we watched her paper fan flutter back and forth, pulling moist, soft chicken air along with it. She took a deep breath. Her skin glowed as she smiled. And she told us something we already knew. Lucy, settle down. Goodness gracious, great balls of fire. That Easter bonnet in Mr. Kadinsky's window is the most beautiful I ever did see, she said thoughtfully. The three of us exchanged looks. We wanted to get her that hat more than anything in the whole wide world. Can you see her paper fan? Let's see, I can't, right there. And where's Patricia, you guys? Can you see her? I think I got a lot of sunshine on my pages today. Maybe if I move to the other side, it'll be better to see. Stuart reached into the hole in the trunk of our wish tree in the backyard. He pulled a rusty Band-Aid tin out. The three of us held our breath as we counted the money inside that we had been saving for weeks. If we're going to get that hat for Miss Eula in time for Easter, we're going to need a lot more than this, I announced. Maybe we should ask Mr. Kadinsky if we could sweep up his shop or earn something with or do something to earn the rest of the money, Stuart said. I don't know, Winnie said fearfully. He's such a strange old man. He never smiles at anybody. He always looks so mean. We all agreed it was still worth a try anyway. The next day, we took a shortcut down the alley in the back of the hat shop. 
Bigger boys were there. They were yelling. Eggs flew past us and pelted Mr. Kadinsky's back door. Just as the boys ran away, the door flew open. Mr. Kadinsky glared straight at us. You there, he yelled. Why do you kids do things like this? It wasn't us, Stuart tried to say, but Mr. Kadinsky wouldn't listen to us. All I want to do is live my life in peace. I'm calling your grandmother, she shouted as she wagged her finger in Stuart's face. Do you see those naughty boys running away? I do. They're not very nice. Miss Eula was waiting in our living room for us. Miss Eula, we didn't throw those eggs, I sobbed. Some big boys did, Stuart sputtered. What were you doing at the back of his shop in the first place? she asked. We knew that we couldn't tell her the truth, so we just stood there and cried. She looked at us for a long while. Baby dears, I want to believe you. Heaven knows that I brought you children up to always tell the truth. If you say you didn't do it, then I believe you. It is too bad, though, she went on to say. That poor man has suffered so much in his life. He deserves more than eggs thrown at him. You know, he thinks you threw the eggs. You'll have to show him that you are good people. You'll have to change his mind somehow. In my kitchen the next day, we thought and thought, how, <clears throat> excuse me, how can we win him over when he thinks we threw those eggs, Stuart asked. He doesn't even like us, Winston chirped. Eggs, I said quietly, eggs, Stuart said. Eggs, I screamed. I went to the kitchen drawer and took out a lump of beeswax, a candle, a small funnel with a wooden handle, and some packets of yellow, red, and black dye. Do you guys know what in the world is on her mind? There's Patricia. There's her friends. <clears throat> Mom helped me show the boys how to decorate the eggs the way my bubby probably her babushka, had taught us the way they do it in the old country. We made designs on the eggshells with hot wax, then dyed them and finally melted the wax patterns off. We put the eggs in a basket and even though we were afraid, marched into Mr. Kadinsky's shop and put them on the counter. So what does it look like they're making that we do here in our area. To me, that kind of looks like when you put crayons on a hard-boiled egg for Easter eggs and then you color them and dye. Have you guys ever done that? That'd be kind of do, or excuse me, fun to do now that you're home. He raised his eyebrows and glowered at us. Then his eyes dropped to the basket. Spasiba! He said softly, that means thank you in Russian. Paisanki eggs. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. He said as he looked closely, I haven't seen these since I left my homeland. We didn't throw those eggs at your door, Mr. Kodinsky, we told him. He looked at us for a minute. Well then, you have great courage to be here. Chutzpah! You have chutzpah! Then his eyes glistened and his mouth curled into a warm smile. Come, let's have some tea. He seems a lot happier now, doesn't he? We spent the whole afternoon talking together, having poppy seed cake and strong tea. He told us about his life 
We told him about ours. When we finally got the courage to ask about doing odd jobs to earn some extra money, he apologized and told us there was no work. We didn't tell him what we wanted the money for. It didn't seem like the right thing to do. Our hearts sank. I tell you this, he said thoughtfully. These eggs are as beautiful as my hats. Stuart, Winnie, and I looked at each other. It is almost Easter, he went on to say. I'm sure that people would love these eggs. Set up a table and sell them right here in my shop. And there's Patricia and everybody else. For the next few days, we worked very hard. We made almost a dozen Paisanki eggs. When people came in, they picked them up and said things like, oh, beautiful, splendid, intricate, glorious. We sold them all in a single day. There's Patricia. Everybody loves those eggs. That afternoon, when all the eggs were gone, we counted our money. We had more than enough for the hat. Just as we were about to tell Mr. Kadinsky that we wanted to buy the hat, he came out from the back room holding a beautiful hat box, gift wrapped. Keep your money, children, he said softly. I have seen Miss Eula admire this. It is for her, isn't it? Tell her that I know you are very good children. Such good children. Woohoo! Look at how happy they are now. Kind of surprised, I bet, that he knew. When Easter Sunday arrived, we thought our hearts would burst when we watched Miss Eula open the hat box. She held us close as big tears rolled down her cheeks. Oh, she's just so tickled. There's her hat. Our hearts sang along with the choir that Sunday. She looked so beautiful with that hat. When it was time for her solo, we knew that her heart was singing just for us. Her voice was slow like the thunder and sweet rain. Later that day, as Miss Eula sat at the head of the table, she said, Oh, baby dears, I can die happy now. And after I'm dead on chicken Sundays, I want you to boil up some chicken, bones, gravy and all, and pour it over my grave. So late at night when I'm hungry, I can reach right out and have some. Then she rolled her head back and laughed from a deep, holy place inside. Winston Stewart, Stewart and I are all grown up now. Our old neighborhood has changed some, yet it's still familiar too. The freeway rumbles over the spot where Mr. Kadinsky's shop once stood. I think of him often and his glorious hats. We lost Miss Eula some time back, but every year we take some chicken soup up to the Mountain View Cemetery and do just as she asked. Uh-oh. That was Lucy dropping books. Sometimes when we are especially quiet inside, we can hear singing, a voice that sounds like slow thunder and sweet rain. I sure hope that you guys like this book. Even with all of that puppy noise in the background, she decided she wasn't interested in this book and she kept running around in the room, playing with toys. She even chewed on a cord and maybe a blanket. And then she dropped those books. So sorry, guys. That's my dog, Lucy, known as Lucifer. Have a great day. Bye.